Hi everybody, I'm Chuck and this is my good friend Mark from OKC. So Mark, what are we doing today? So Chuck and I have been working our way through the book of Acts, story by story, uh, from a disciple maker's perspective. And what that means is we were looking at these stories and reading through them, but then unpacking what can we learn about what that looks like to be a disciple maker through this story. And so we've been seeing some persecution happen in the church and some uh, real filtering out of who's really in this thing. And I think this story today really drives that home. So, mm. All right. So let's go to Acts 5, uh, 1 through 16, if you could read that for us more. So it says, but a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and kept back some of the price for himself with his wife's full knowledge. And bringing a portion of it, he laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. And as he heard these words, Ananias fell down and breathed his last, and great fear came over all who heard it. The young men got up and covered him up, and after carrying him out, they buried him. Now there elapsed the interval of about three hours, and his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter responded to her, tell me whether you sold the land for such and such a price. And she said, yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, why is it that you have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to the test? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband, uh, buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out as well. And immediately she fell at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead. And they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came over the whole church and over all who heard of these things. At the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were taking place among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's portico. But none of the rest dared associate with them. However, the people held them in high esteem. And all the more believers in the Lord, multitudes of men and women were constantly added to their number to such an extent that they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and pallets so that when Peter came by and at least his shadow might fall on one of them. Also, the people from the cities in the vicinity of Jerusalem were coming together, bringing people who were sick or afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all being healed. All right, that's quite the story. Uh, so what's going on in the church at this point? Uh, I would not put that on a Hallmark uh, <laughs> gift card or a, a, a card. This is not one of those quotable passages. But, um, you know, I think what stands out to me here is Peter. He's, tr he's doing his best to lead this newly forming movement and um it had to have been just like something beyond it you can't tame it it's just growing and moving and things are happening but mm -hmm. at the same time from his perspective he's got to protect the dna of what's growing and so um humanity gets in the way of the movement unless you come in and you make sure that dna is pure so it seems pretty intense but um i guess these these folks came in they're not being honest and direct. And Peter sees, man, if this gets sewed into the fabric of the growing movement, it's going to stop before it even starts. Yeah, I think a lot of times we want to just skip over this part of Acts and, you know, just la, 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 you know, uh, this never happened. Uh, yes, it did. And guess what? It's probably happening in our church you know so uh it it really underscores the need for integrity before the lord and before his church yeah. uh to me it it 
it's not good enough just to kind of fake the funk, you know. I'm, I'm kind of doing this thing here. I'm kind of religious. Uh, you know, it's, it's clear, uh, not just from Peter, but from the Holy Spirit. I want people that are all in. You know, and and us and Sapphira were half stepping, you know, half in, and uh, so it's it's quite shocking. What was the primary emotion that the church was kind of feeling at this point? Uh, it's, again, it's not something you put on the Hallmark greeting card, but they felt afraid. They're they're like, what in the heck? This is crazy. Yeah, is this yeah. what we signed up for? Yeah. 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 I, and I think a lot of times uh, preachers try to downplay the fear of the Lord. Well, it's just respect, you know, perfect love cast out all fear. Well, if we perfectly loved God, yes, we would not be afraid, you know, yeah. but... Uh, it, it's very obvious that the early church walked in a sense of fear and trembling, not just respect. So, but it, with all the problems that are coming into the, the assembly, something really uh, miraculous and exciting is happening to the church. What's happening? even in the midst of problems. So uh, in the midst of that, and maybe even because that they're, they're mm -hmm. purified and that they're re these are the really committed ones, the power of God is on display and mm -hmm. bringing the sick. And um, it goes so far as to say, and all of them were healed. So that's a mm -hmm. pretty high testimony, high standard of everybody who was brought to them, uh, God healed. Yeah, and you might think that when this happened, people would be, you know, afraid, like it says, but standoffish, and some of them were, but you would think that's kind of where the, the growth of the church would end right there. Hey, don't associate with those guys. People are dying over there, you know, mm -hmm. but just the opposite is happening. People are, are coming and the church is increasing by the numbers day by day. And we're seeing these radical miracles happening. So uh, sometimes, you know, when we look at problems in our church, like you were saying, it might be the very obstacle that we need to get to get through to see the next level of growth in our church. So any other observations about this passage, Mark? Yeah, I think the other thing that just continues to ring in my mind, you know, we read through Acts 2 here a few weeks ago, and we identified these practices of church. And there's, uh, Chuck and I have been talking about this, there's layers to when it comes to mm -hmm. understanding what, it, what does it mean to be church? And it's not just something that we do outwardly, because you could almost make that case. You read this story and the giving part, they were giving. Yeah. And they could check that box. Yep. But at the heart level, it, there was a mixture there. And it wasn't, um, they weren't giving from the heart in a way that what, they were trying to be deceptive. Yeah, And so it, what that just does to me is t causes me to go back to that Acts 2 passage and say, what does this really look like at the heart level to live out church? Yeah, and that's one of the things I most appreciate about you is you're always going to that next level deeper. You know, oh, okay, I prayed, but was my heart in there? Was, was body, soul, mind, spirit? all in at that point you know and you know if we're honest with ourselves most of the time we're going to say i think there's room to improve you know and that's okay but we were honest and we're growing and i think that's the case 
it, it is interesting. We're talking about discipleship, and, and, and a lot of times I think, you know, the body thinks of discipleship as a individual sport, you know, where this is very corporate. So I'm going to ask you a question. You might need a few seconds to add, think about this. <laughs> but what, what is the corporate responsibility going on here as far as discipleship? Yeah, uh, I think the thing I, I see is, is that what that means for us individually is, first of all, it's a mindset shift away from my actions affect me to uh, the responsibility of the individual as they impact the whole is that what I do will at some point, whether I can even put words to it or point to it, it's going to affect the community, the church that I'm a part of. So the church as a whole has a responsibility to uh, really build culture is the only word I would know how to come out of that with mm -hmm. the world. Has, we use that phrase often in connection with the world the world has culture well so does the church the way that we practice life the things that we value the things that we think all those things are going to translate to a way that we live and the church is responsible to have that culture and that culture be lined up with the ways of god if it's mm -hmm. not then um that's where this story and and i think that's the other piece chuck is to just read this story and see Yes, it's about what the disciple maker is doing, but God has not abandoned the uh, the church to just figure it out. He is very, very involved. We see that here uh, with what's happening with Ananias, Sapphira, and then ongoing Peter's uh, shadow. That's Peter's doing nothing. He's standing there, and yeah. God is very involved in his church. So those two pieces work together, I think. Yeah, so we see individual responsibility corporate responsibility and God's responsibility, if we can put it that, they're all three working and we dare not separate these things out. It's like a grilled cheese sandwich. Once you grill it, you can't pull it apart. It's, it's all together. All right. Well, I hope that's helpful as you look at uh, one of the tougher stories in the New Testament but uh, let's be people of integrity and uh, following the lead of the Holy Spirit. All right. We love you. God bless you. And until next time, keep following Jesus.